back. There we go again. We're recording again. And um, again, we're back from Uplift Fluoride with some more great information for how to uplift your life, how to make you feel good, how to live a really healthy, nice, great, feeling good life. And uh, hit the subscribe button if you want to be, and, and, the, uh, and the little bell if you want to be notified whenever we put new content up. Uh, today, we're joined again by Rachel and uh, Amanda. And Rachel, Amanda, why don't you give a little bit of a background uh, so that everybody knows who you are. Uh, Rachel, why don't you go first? Awesome. Thanks, Bill. Um, mm. Hi, everybody. I'm Rachel, and uh, I'm a lifelong learner, as I mentioned previously, for everything health-related under the sun, um, whether that's physical activity, mental, um, emotional balance. But uh, my background is in, I was once a bikini competitor, so uh, NPC competitions, as well as an avid hiker um, and backpacker, do a little bit of um, Bowen therapy as well. So if anybody's familiar with, you know, craniosacral and Bowen, those modalities, that's my my neck of the woods. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Rachel. And I'm Amanda. I am a formal biology teacher and a current yoga instructor and doctoral student in an acupuncture and herbal medicine program. And very similar to Rachel, I love to learn about how to live more healthy and in sync with nature. Fantastic. That's great. I am uh, always, I've always tried to be, you know, sort of more in sync with nature and, you know, work on my body or whatever you want to call it. But, uh, you know, we've, we've had this conversation before, Amanda, you and I about, you know, the ideal body or exercising to try and get to the ideal body. And, you know, and it, there is no such thing, really, you know, your body is your body, and you need to feel comfortable in your body and you exercise what you can exercise in your body. You know, not everybody, like I, as much as I can run or as much as I can, you know, do indoor rowing or cycling, I am not going to ever be five foot eight, weighing 120 pounds, you know, that I can cycle or I can run, you know, really fast. It's just never going to happen for me. You know, I have a body that's built more like a, you know, well, when I swam, they used to say I swim like an otter. So, <laughs> <laughs> but that never stopped. It didn't stop me. You know, I'm never going to be a, I'm never going to be, you know, a tremendous, this tremendous, you know, like speedster. It just doesn't happen for me. But, you know, I, I have to do something. It's good for me mentally. It's good for me physically. And, and I think that there's a lot of people out there like that, you know, and one of the ways, and as we've spoken before, I, I did, you know, I, I sort of flip-flopped. I, I was very, in very good shape. I was, it was always an athlete. And then, you know, I ballooned up just tremendously and it really in a, in a bad way uh, and, and ballooned up in weight. And then I, I took the weight off. And one of the ways that I did it uh, when I started out, because I couldn't just go and go from zero to whatever, I started out just walking. And, you know, I found that walking, even if it's, you know, one mile, two miles, three miles, four miles, you know, it's it gets the heart rate going. And it's almost as beneficial from a weight loss perspective as, as running, you know, in terms of burning calories and in terms of, of doing some other things without any without the adverse impact on your body that you get from, you know, running. So. Yeah, that I um, just to share a little bit about you know my personal story uh, that really resonates with me because I was born with a my my knee bending the other way. So <laughs> the doctors for a long time have been like, oh, you know, like in a few years, running's not going to be a thing for you. Um, and I've been able to overcome that through you know um, lifting and making sure that those joints are supported by tissue. But uh, when I was in college, Phil, I've told you this story. I um, I ended up actually uh, developing an eating disorder. And the thing that got oh, no. me through it before um, I found training and found my love for training was I would get outside and walk, albeit not in nature, but <laughs> I'd walk like two to five miles in the middle of downtown LA. And it, the mental clarity, the um, the forgiveness and the ease that I gave myself 
you know, for the ability to say like, okay, you know, you, you aren't where you want to be right now, as you mentioned, you know, you got to love your body where it is right now. Um, that was a hard process for me. And one of the few things that I think saved my life um, was, you know, that forgiveness of like, it doesn't matter where I'm at right now. Yeah. It doesn't matter, you know, how I think I look getting outside and making my body feel good right now, every day by walking is the best gift I can give to it. So this is something I'm really passionate about. And it's important for a lot of people, wherever they are in their journey. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't, I, I couldn't agree more. I think, you know, forgiveness is a, is a, is a good word because, you know, I, my, my wake up moment was when I went to, to a doctor to, to get a COVID test and I stood on the scale and I knew, believe me, I knew that over the past eight, nine years, I put on weight. You know, I just didn't realize how much weight I put on. And when I got on that scale, I was like, oh my God, this has to stop because I'm just not healthy. You know, and it wasn't because, you know, and, and what I realized was I, I just didn't feel good. I didn't feel good about myself. I didn't feel good about my body. I didn't feel good about the clothes I, I could, you know, I was wearing. And so I decided to do something about it. And that's when I started analyzing my diet, looking at, you know, getting sugar out of my diet, focusing on putting beneficial ingredients into my diet and then walking, you know, and I've got dogs. So I always walked a little bit, but then I said, you know, my dogs are going to start walking like three, four miles a day. So uh, that's sort of how it started, you know, but it was feeling good about being able to walk out there and say, you know, well, this is what I did to myself. You know, I have nobody to blame but myself. But at the same time, it doesn't make me a bad person. It just means now I got to work on it, which I which I did, you know, and I'm still doing it. I mean, I still have I still have a ways to go. But, totally. Yeah. I, I also have a similar not similar, but my own walking story, <laughs> because I am um, of back in 2016, I ended up with a blood clot in my subclavian vein and I had to have one of my ribs removed in order for it to my, my arm to receive blood flow. And my arm had like exploded into this huge balloon. And after that surgery, I couldn't do anything that I know helps me mentally. Like I right. couldn't do yoga. I couldn't run everything that I knew would help me. I hadn't, didn't have access to. And that's when I started to walk every day. Cause I could walk and I could sit. So I started walking and I started meditating. That's how I established my meditation practice. And those became my new tools to help my, my own peace of mind because I couldn't use the ones that had worked for me before. My, my body couldn't do that at that time. And now it's like I have all these tools to, wow. to pull on in the toolbox. But at that time, walking was another way. I was having a lot of emotions and that helped me be with them and process them and and move through the healing so yes to walking <laughs> yeah that's, a, that's an amazing story i mean the things you find out about people on these videos is just incredible. <laughs> <laughs> or your heart out <laughs> i mean it's true it's true you know we all have a i, I don't i think that you know people sometimes look at other people and they think that it's perfect, you know, or everybody's perfect. You know, you think, oh my God, you know, look at Amanda. She's, you know, look at the flexibility with the yoga and how good shape she's in. And you think, God, she's perfect. You don't realize the backstory to get there, right? You look at Rachel and you say, okay, well, you know, bikini model, weightlifting, you know, you don't realize the backstory to get there, you know? Me, of course, you can see the backstory. I oh, <laughs> don't do that to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, but I, you know, so I, I think that people, I think it's important for people to understand, you know, that the, you, sometimes you just have to take that first step, right? The journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. And and to me, the easiest thing is, is walking. And we've all sort of said something about that first step was, was, was walking, you know, the first step back to re recovery or getting back to where we want to be or whatever. So, you know, and I think along with that, comes you know when you start doing it and i'm sure we've all experienced it once you start walking two or three or four miles right your your body sort of um or any exercise actually right your body gets a bit inflamed right it's just natural right you know the process for mm -hmm. um explain like you know 
uh, what happens when you, I mean, especially when you lift weights and, and you do that kind of stuff, right? You're ripping the muscle and then you've get inflammation and, and the muscle's got to be rebuilt. So. Yeah. You know. I feel like after a good walk, I can feel my hamstrings like, whoa, whoa. We'll see whoa. That. Yeah. <laughs> I know exactly like that twitch. It's almost like a very yeah. satisfying. Like, uh, wow. All right. <laughs> Yeah, people yeah. say it's a runner's high, but I think there's a walking high too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and oh, I yeah. have another part of my like walking journey has been like sometimes I I like am my own my own worst enemy of like, well, I'm not gonna be able to do it for an hour, so I'm not gonna do it at all. Oh and, yeah. And overcoming that and being like, I've only got 10 minutes and I'm gonna walk. And that's totally great and Fine, it doesn't have to be this whole ordeal. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't have to be an appointment that you right. Yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I find that too. And so, you know, sometimes I'll say, Well, I'll, I'll go out and I'll do this for you know 20 minutes and then I'll come back to it later and later and later. Sometimes I go three or four walks in a day because obviously the dogs need it, but you know, even in the beginning, when before I could run or do anything else, it was you know, because when I when I was heavy, it was you know, it just didn't like just, just exercising was, was became difficult, you know, and then it, it got better and better. And the better I felt about it, you know, I started to get that high again. And then, you know, I tend to take things a little to the extreme. So, you know, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm going to go out and do a half marathon. <laughs> so what did you do for the inflammation in your, in your legs, Phil? <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> I'm glad you asked. You, know, you get the inflammation and, you know, what, again, a natural ingredient, turmeric, which is actually, a, you know, a spice. We have, we have this, the, the golden milk, which is a turmeric tea and turmeric is a, is a natural anti-inflammatory. So using it after you exercise, whatever exercise you do, you know, whether it's walking or running or, you know, weightlifting, bikini contests, anything that takes it out of you, you know, it's, 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 <laughs> it's good. It's good for reducing that inflammation, you know, and then obviously there's, you know, there's so many other pieces in there because again, we've got, um, you know, we've got ginger root in that product and we've got uh, <coughs> gooseberries and things. And what that does is it, it, it also calms your body. So, you know, now you've just sort of gotten your body moving into this, you know, walk and now you've, you've sort of inflamed the, the muscle a bit. Now you want to sort of calm it so that you can calm your body down in a natural way and make yourself, you know, feel better. Get your joints and your body to calm down. And even this tea, even at uh, the golden milk in, in the evening before going to bed, my favorite to do with this, and it always comes back to the coffee. My favorite thing to do with this is to add it to the coffee. So I add it to my cup of coffee and it makes like a latte. <laughs> it's, really, <laughs> it's really kind of good. But anyway, that's, uh, but yeah, I mean. Um, I need to try that, the the latte. I'm like craving one now. <laughs> I, I still haven't tried it. I'm scared. <laughs> Are you? I'm excited, especially after this. I, I feel like, especially in the bodybuilding community, you know, we get so fixated on supplements and like, what's mm -hmm. the newest thing on the market and what's the newest scientific sounding thing that I can put into my body. But um, Amanda and I were talking about this briefly, you know, it, it all goes back to coming back to your roots. I mean, these simple ingredients are effective and powerful for a reason. So I'm excited to, you know, um, when I'm in my protein window, I'm finishing up my workout, you know, I need to get my protein in, but having something that's pure, you know, that's, that's food <laughs> to be able to supplement it. Uh, I think that that's, that's going to help me, you know, feel good the next day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I think that when you, when you start to look at medicine or, or, you know, food or anything, it all, it all gets rooted in nature, right? Every, every single thing that we do um, gets rooted in nature right? You know, even um, antibiotics and, and all that, when they found the, the solution, I'm sure you know this, Amanda, you're, you're, you're you know, biology, but, you know, it's, 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 it all gets rooted in nature. So it stands to reason that the food we put in is going to help us recover. So there's, you know, I, I, supplements, I think, are, are good in certain cases, but I think you can do it with, with just food, you know, and that's what this, these products are just food. Amen. 
<laughs> okay, great. Well, that's all the time we have today, folks. No. <laughs> Be here all week. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to change my outfit. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I appreciate you guys joining me today. We've been, uh, I think it was a pretty good discussion, and I hope everybody out there has uh, gotten something from it. And again, you know, hit the wind, hit the little button and subscribe, and we've got the little bell so you get notified when we uh, put new content up. We'll have uh, some links to uh, Rachel and Amanda's uh, channels. So you can look at Amanda, do her yoga classes online. Rachel has some- just look at it, at me do it. You do it. <laughs> <laughs> look at, watch how Amanda does it so that you don't have to do it. You know, so, um, I know, I'm excited to follow along. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's great. Uh, I, I, uh, um, I, I definitely, I love yoga, but I, I need somebody there to teach me how to do it, you know, or show me how to do it because, uh, but, um, yeah. So, uh, look for some more content and we'll have all that stuff posted in the, uh, in the comment section and, um, thanks and have a, have a good day. <laughs>